soul with it. What's going on everybody, D. Oliver's TV back with another video and today I would like to discuss with you all my full breakdown and analysis on why I think in my opinion that the Los Angeles Lakers will sweep the Houston Rockets, that's right I said it, sweep the Houston Rockets in the Western Conference semifinals. Now y'all probably like oh the Rockets haven't even you know got past the OKC Thunder or you know they just got past the OKC Thunder or whatnot. come on bro, come on. Now, I'll erase this entire video if the OKC Thunder defeats the Houston Rockets, which anybody with a brain knows that the National Basketball Association, not even the NBA, we're not even going to call it the NBA no more. Matter of fact, we're going to change it to NBE. Yes, National Basketball Entertainment. You know how wrestling was WWF at one point, which was one of the greatest points of my life when I got to watch The Rock, my favorite wrestler all the time. Basketball is now NBE, okay? The Lakers will get past the Blazers and the Rockets will meet the Los Angeles Lakers in the Western Conference semifinals. The NBA ratings are bad, horrible, okay? So now I probably stand alone with this prediction and it's rightfully so, but I had a conversation with a few of my coworkers, one being a Laker fan as well. They all disagree with me, which is nothing, which is nothing new. You know, I'm used to it by now, but he expressed how he thinks that the Houston Rockets will be a tough matchup for the Lakers, especially when the Rockets go small. And I counter him and I then express to him how you can't match them playing their game, which is small ball. You can't play their brand of basketball if you want to defeat them in a series. You have to force them to adjust to how you play. This is what Kobe Bryant explained in a past interview when he was speaking about the Golden State Warriors. And it's, it's funny how Kobe can foresee the future sometimes. He How he spoke about how the Lakers will be champions again and the go to state warrior bandwagon fans who came out of nowhere he explained how how it's going to be a point in time where the lakers will be back on top and the warriors will fall all the way to the bottom and it's just ironic how they are all the way at the bottom at this point you know kobe mentioned how you can't defeat a team like the Golden State Warriors playing their brand of basketball, which is why the Lakers were built the way they were initially in the beginning of the season. You know, so with the Lakers, it's imperative that they stick to their brand of basketball, in my opinion, and go big as much as they can and be very aggressive and be very physical and, and play from the inside out opposed to the outside in. You know, if you have to go small, then of course you have no other choice but to go small. The Rockets matchup wise really don't have an answer for Anthony Davis. And that's why I've already stated before the playoffs even started that it's important that Anthony Davis get to the free throw line. You know what you're saying him do more of in game three and game four. I mean, he's a 90% free throw shooter for Christ's sakes. Get the ball to him in the paint and tell him just go and tell him to just go right up. They won't have an answer for him. They don't have Clint Capella and all these guys no more. I understand the league is going small. But you're not going to beat teams playing their brand of basketball. And the chances of him getting to the line is extremely high. Then you can go get your elbow jumpers and, you know, stretch him out to the five and things like that. You know, I think you have to get the ball to him early in the post. They won't have time to send a double team at him because he's already made a decision to go up. The reason I think it's important for the Lakers to stick to their brand of basketball is because the Rockets are a hit or miss team. When they are hitting a lot of shots and scorching, they could be lethal, and that goes for a lot of teams in the NBA right now. But this is why I think defense is the key. Force them to take tough shots and force James Harden to look human on some nights, especially in the fourth quarter. You know, throw double teams at him, going seven for 16 from the field, going two for six from three. And this is why people question James Harden in the postseason, because it's like when the lights shine too bright and it's time to advance, he always comes up short. Force the rest of the team to defeat you if you are the Lakers. The Rockets have two stars. You know, they have two star players in Harden and Westbrook. Westbrook in the postseason is literally 51 and 47 in terms of wins and losses in the wins and losses column. LeBron James is 159. He has 159 wins and 84 losses. Kevin Durant has 88 wins and 51 losses. You know, Steph Curry is 77, has 77 wins and 35 losses in the postseason. So you compare that to Russell Westbrook numbers, it's horrible. He's a turnover machine and he takes shots that he's not very proficient. Ray, he takes really low percentage shots in the playoffs, especially down the stretches of games. You know, Russell Westbrook and James Harden are both regular season special talents, period. But there's a reason why Kevin Durant left Westbrook and there's a reason why Paul George got traded. I don't care if it's, oh, he just wanted to get traded, he wanted out. No, the Thunder was probably tired of Westbrook as well. You know, they probably sat him down and said, hey, 
You know, it'd probably be better for you to go elsewhere. We want to rebuild, period. And as I explained to my coworker, Westbrook is a player who I feel plays with a lot of passion. He plays fired up, which is a really great thing. I think he has that killer instinct that MJ and Kobe had. The issue with Westbrook is he just can't control his aggression. He doesn't know how to channel it properly. He lets the Patrick Beverleys get in his head and many others. That doesn't take away from Westbrook greatness. But when it's crunch time and the game is on the line, a lot of times Russell Westbrook gets in his own way and can't nobody stop him, not even the coach. It may take for him to, you know, it could take for him to just make one pass, but he'll look you away and just take the shot and miss it. You know, he's looking to pad the stats and, and that's when players aren't in rhythm because Russell Westbrook done missed a lot of shots. And the biggest issue is that Russell Westbrook never holds himself accountable. He's a one-man wrecking crew. And if James Harden and Chris Paul couldn't get along, what makes you think that it would work for Westbrook and James Harden in the postseason? I don't care if they played together or they friends. That doesn't matter. There are players who wasn't really friends that won championships. But I think the Lakers know that they can't go seven games with the Rockets. Why? You know, that'll exert too much energy from when they play the Clippers in the Western Conference Finals. The Lakers need to be at full strength to defeat the Clippers. The Clippers will have to make it out a dogfight, you know, when they go up against the Denver Nuggets. So in order for the Lakers to have that advantage over the Clippers, and, you know, and sneak in a couple of games of rest, they have to take care of business versus the Rockets. LeBron James and Anthony Davis will have to put on the most dominant performances, and I expect them to do that and get early leads. Next, Cal Kuzma. Typically, you know, typically if you do your history as a Laker fan, you know that Cal Kuzma has had some monstrous games versus the Houston Rockets. And I think you will see Cal Kuzma have some stellar performances versus the Rockets, and I think he'll be the determining factor. The Lakers will need a third option, which the Rockets don't have, and just based off the success and the amount of looks that Kuzma's gotten in the past versus the Rockets, I expect Kuzma will play very well which also will help us sweep them, in my opinion. LeBron James will have to average at least 28 points per game, 28 to 30 points per game, and Anthony Davis has to average at least 32 to 34 points per game. Kuz has to average 19 to 20 points per game in that series. Danny Green has to be physical on defense, especially on Westbrook, or put Morris or somebody big on Westbrook. And also, Danny Green has to step up and make shots. When KCP makes shots, it help our chances of winning. Also, I think Deion Waiters need more minutes and opportunity to give us that foul power off the bench. You know, when the Lakers take care of business early, they typically get the victory, but they have to play elite level defense. And lastly, I know this video has been going on for a minute. You know, y'all got short attention spans nowadays. But lastly, Mike D'Antoni, in the postseason, throughout his entire career as a coach, he has not been able to to get past the Western Conference Finals as a head coach. And why? Because he specializes in offense. But it's like he doesn't know how to get his guys to buy in defensively. I don't know. Like, maybe that's because, you know, potentially he's a beta male and doesn't hold players accountable, you know. But the man has had some defensive dogs on his team. He has had some defensive dogs on his team and couldn't get them to buy in for some reason and motivate them enough to help his team win an NBA championship or at least get to the finals. This man had Montrezl Harrell before he went to the Clippers, Trevor Ariza, Clint Capella, who's a great rim protector, Patrick Beverly, who is nicknamed Mr. Mr. 94 Feet and is a first-team All-NBA defender. I'm not even going to mention how they had Lou Williams as well coming off the bench at that time. You had all these players at one time in the 2016-17 season. I know Greg Popovich is a phenomenal coach, but there is no reason that that series didn't go seven games. And then you lose them both and get Chris Paul, a seven-time NBA All-Defensive First Team player, and you still couldn't advance to the NBA Finals. Mike D'Antoni just doesn't know how to strategize or motivate his players well enough to maximize their full potential or bring in, or just at least bring somebody in who specializes in that department. People could say what they want about Frank Vogel, but for some reason, you know, he's been drawing up the right plays and, you know, writing up the perfect schemes to get his players to buy in defensively. Also, it helps having a, a anchor on defense and Anthony Davis. The great coaches can do that. Greg Popovich could take that same talent that Mike D'Antoni has to turn that into a championship. So it all comes down to this. James Harden, Russell Westbrook, and Mike D'Antoni all have one thing in common in their careers. They're all regular season front runners and perform at the highest level during the regular season. But come postseason, they just don't got what it takes to scheme defensively and show up when the lights are bright. And all these reasons will factor into why I believe the Lakers will sweep the Houston Rockets. The OKC Thunder was able to win two games, still two games versus the Rock, 
But anyway, y'all let me know what y'all think. Y'all get in that comment box, like, share, subscribe. I'm out.